Okay, so we're talking accuracy today. I went to the range and shot the uh, 14.7. Don't have any shooting footage because there was a ton of people up there. A couple guys shooting SBRs. Uh, actually, several guys shooting AR pistols. So the footage would have been pretty terrible. Um, I got pelted with brass a couple times. So it just would not have been a good day to actually film. But what we're looking at is our... Uh, it's our first target with our 14.7 inch Colt Hammer Forged Palometto State Upper. So what we're going to do is we've got the caliper zeroed. We're going to open them up to approximately the size of a 5.56 223 bullet. And... That's close enough. We're gonna zero it so that if we measure outside to outside, we get a center to center diameter. So the first two loads we're looking at here are the uh, two groups, the wolf. There was a round right over here, just barely off the cardboard. And uh, Aguila, Aguila, however you say that, the Mexican uh, 223 ammo. And we've got our uh, caliper zeroed at uh, basically bullet diameter. So let's run them out. Check our group size. So we'll say uh, 1.943. And later on, I'm going to get to the more high dollar ammunition. Uh, yeah, 1.414. And this one's going to be a little bit trickier. We'll just give it a good guess. I don't think that the Every last tenth of an inch is going to matter. Every last thousandth. We'll say 1.8 for that group. And I was aiming at these targets down here when I shot these three groups. This is a 200 yard zero for this rifle, or should be a 200 yard zero. All these other groups up here were shot with different rifles, uh, with a different rifle, a single different rifle. And basically, this is what I feel like I'm capable of shooting on a good day. This is uh, a little under five-eighths of an inch. This was Wolf, I believe, and uh, that might have been Wolf. But just testing out some different stuff. These two groups were Hornady Black. I might show that other rifle at a later date, but uh, it's not what this video is about. So, uh, see, I've got all these labeled right here. And... I think I already showed these, but there's the wolf. There's the other. And let's see. So we'll start out top center. Um, American Eagle 50 grain varmint tipped. That's the ammo that this was... Uh, this was right here, and that's actually an older lot that I've had for a long time. That uh, the ammo actually had some minor, like surface ugliness. So we're going to say 1.1, just for nice round numbers. And let's grab our next box here. American Whitetail, 60 grain soft point. It's going to be this group right here. So, and some people are going to ask for a larger sample size. Uh, I don't have the money to do that. 1.8.
and on these bigger groups it's not super critical i'm not like super concerned uh ppu so this is the ppu 75 grain and 1.63 uh, see if I've got a box of that just to... so that's what I was shooting 223 Remington match 75 grain hall point boat tail Next up that we're going to show, uh, Winchester 62 grain M855, um, full metal jacket, it's the steel penetrator, and uh, 112. anybody wants to know the way I was shooting all these groups was uh, with a front support and a rear bag I did not have a bipod attachment on this rifle at this point so so our last two groups are gonna be this uh, Hornady black 223 Remington 75 grain hollow point boat tail uh, and this ammo is what the other rifle shot this and this with so i know it's a very capable ammunition these groups uh are very very good um and i've actually had basically an elongated one whole group with that ammo so 1.1 1 .1, let's see 1.1 1 .1, 1 point we'll just say 1.2 it's pretty close to 1.2 And our last group here. Uh, 1.42. Now let's talk about what could have been better with this. So I feel like I shoot better prone. I was not shooting prone. Uh, I was shooting off of a bench. I'm not a great bench shooter. Um, I could have actually had a bipod on the rifle instead of using a, uh, a rest. So right here, throw the rest out here. Um, this is the rest that I was using. So it's a Vanguard, if anybody's interested. Uh, it works okay, but I typically don't shoot as well off of it. The other rifle had a bipod. Uh, I feel the bipod works better. Um, I was using a, you know, one to six power scope. And I feel like, uh, you know, these groups down here were shot with a 25 power scope. I don't need a 25 power scope to shoot, you know, really good groups to 100 yards. Uh, I've done excellent with an 18 power scope, a 16 power scope. Uh, when my eyes were a little better, and they're not terrible now, but when they were a little better, I actually shot some shot some good groups with a really clear three power scope. What I find is this six power scope, uh, this vortex, is not super clear. So I think some of this might have been the scope, uh, the trigger in the gun is not the best in the world. It is a mil spec trigger. It's not the worst mil spec trigger I've ever felt. It's also not the best mil spec trigger, and I'll probably at some point try to uh, maybe find somebody with a trigger gauge and get some numbers on that, but it's not terrible. Um, so I could have shot prone, could have had a better trigger, could have had a better optic. Also, uh, there were guys shooting cannons all around me when I was shooting some of these groups, especially the first three groups. Um, so... I don't think the accuracy is bad. I don't think that, you know, this is going to affect anybody's, uh, you know, that's not that bad. I mean, inch and a half accuracy, which is basically where it falls on most of the groups. 
is not terrible. Uh, so yeah, I think that uh, I think that it'll work. It's not great, but it's not the worst I've ever seen. So if you like the video, hit the like button. If you uh, didn't like it, hit the dislike button. I mean, really, you know, give me some feedback. Leave a comment. Uh, if you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button. As always, thanks for watching.